Hi everybody, I'm Lauren Faber. I sit on the Power BI Cat team and I am so excited to have David Shantz here today from Nokia as Nokia uh, is the number six user of Power BI in the world. So David, if you could tell us a little bit more about what we'll be going over today, Nokia and your role. I can do, thanks Lauren for, for having me. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, showcase our sort of journey into bringing analytics into HR and in, and in partnership with the Microsoft platforms and tools we're using. Um, I'm currently the head of HR workforce analytics and organization management for Nokia. Uh, they have, those are two different global teams. I'll be focused on the first one uh, the most. I'm based in Munich. I've been here about 12 years and been with the company and its predecessors coming from the U.S. Uh, uh, for about 20 plus years without dating myself. The agenda today really, uh, is, the focus is to go over our journey start into bringing HR uh, into the world of analytics and how we've moved through the evolution into the data visualization world using Microsoft Power BI. Our analytics capability evolution over the last uh, year and a half or so really has escalated and then um, bring in some use cases that are very relevant and current into uh, the COVID support. So a little bit about Nokia. Um, we are a company now of about uh, 95,000 employees uh, worldwide. You can see the, the distribution on the slide. Uh, we, are, we are large, we are very multinational. Uh, year end 219 net sales was about 23.3 billion euros. Um, we are an infrastructure company, so contrary to a number of people still believing we make cell phones or handsets, we, we do not. Um, since uh, 2007, actually, we're totally in the network building business, and we will work hard, and we are in the race, and we are constantly deploying uh, networks to bring you 5G. So Nokia as a voice and, and data infrastructure company is obviously very data-driven, but data and analytics is relatively new to HR, is that right? Yeah, it is. It, it really is. Um, and so it's an exciting uh, journey for us, and I can share a little bit about that. Um, you know, analytics have been sort of pivotal um, over, you know, preceding years with a number of functions like sales and marketing and finance, perhaps, in, in predictive buying patterns and really looking at data to make uh, uh, better decisions for the business. HR was a little slow to the game, I think, in, in how we use data. Uh, to make better people decisions that it results in better business decisions. So our journey started um, a little late compared to some other companies, but we were rapidly catching up. Uh, in 2016, we acquired Alcatel-Lucent, which added 50,000 employees to us. Um, and this was a massive integration effort across the HR organization, not only in the people integration, but in the data and systems integration. And it consumed us uh, literally for, for a couple of years until we were able to finally, at the end of 217, get a consolidated uh, core set of data on all of the employees. And um, that started our look into analytics and how we can get better use of our data through data visualization in 2018. Last year, 2019, we really rapidly expanded that capability, expanded the uh, the provisioning and um, uh, stakeholder use of, of analytics. And going into current day, um, even starting last year, is really the build of automation on uh, automated platforms and moving into advanced analytics. Just a little bit about um, the phases of the journey. Uh, beginning of 218, as I mentioned, we were just getting the, the data platform stabilized with all of the employee data that was needed. Uh, it was traditional uh, platform of, of pushing data and reports and Excel versions to all of the users and HR and, and business uh, from a central reporting source largely or self-pulling. So that, that's the team that's the global reporting team that, that I have that's, that's really turned into the analytics team. Um, and once we had that, we really worked on improving data quality and how we consolidated uh, the use of the data. But that was the big question. How do we get more data from our or value from our data and began investigating what was going on with other companies and in the market. And this was getting a lot of traction in, in visualization. So we said uh, this is a, a very good application for us to get traction in, into this, this world came across uh, the fact that there were many, many users of, of uh, Microsoft Power BI already in Nokia, in the R&D worlds, in finance, and in a number of different functional areas. 
and that actually became the adopted platform for the company. And obviously, we chose chose this and moved quickly into it, and, and very happy we did. The second half of 2018, we decided that I brought in a couple extra horsepower, let's say, uh, in in data science and in Power BI from our IT group. Um, and we utilized the existing users of Power BI, and we were able to quickly develop our former scorecards in Excel and using manual uh, power, uh, loads to create the first dynamic uh, dashboards for all of our, our metrics, which was a huge win. Um, we started with the design and how we wanted to segment the views with all of the different metrics we were going to be able to dynamically view. Uh, in three dimensions and points of time by organization or by location. And these views replaced um, in a couple pages really a lot of different uh, reports and particularly PowerPoint decks to our global leadership team and the HR leadership team um, across what we call state of the union uh, with the workforce. So for us, huge leap forward, uh, overwhelming surprise for the leadership team with the capability. And we were just getting started uh, at that point. 2019 uh, was a, a year of capability, expanded use, and really propagating the value of, of the visualized insights on Power BI. Um, we increased our data sets. We increased our views based on feedback from users. We adapted, uh, enriched uh, the views, and we have, you know, all of our headcount metrics or, or HR metrics, if you will, um, you see on the right-hand side, but they're very rich in detail because of the, the attributes we can look at um, and the users can look at across these, uh, these uh, metrics, like hires and levers. We can look at all sorts of attributes. We can look at uh, the tenure of the, of the levers. We can look at the gender. We can look at performance. We can look at whether this was voluntary or not, um, and, and, um, and the same with all of our organizational analysis became very rich in uh, how deep are we, what are our spans of control, where, you know, manager ratios, um, et cetera. And then we uh, coupled this with a capability development in our center of excellence um, analytics group that formed using the same platform, uh, but for different purpose, really looking to use this uh, technology to visualize all of their metrics that they measure the status of their HR programs in terms of efficiency, in terms of, of uh, effectiveness, and to perhaps adapt their designs and compensation, talent, leadership. So very effective use between um, you know many different sources and, and use cases. And then we have aligned with these two teams. We're in a hybrid operating model, sharing ideas, uh, governance, shared governance on who should be really um, um, proposing what in their in their views, and it's really worked uh, quite well. So this was uh, a large uh, step forward as 219. Apart from this, we we're also developing the, the centralized analytics platform, which we'll get into in, in a little bit. The, yeah, the process you've been able to take with HR and data at Nokia is truly remarkable. With everything going on in the world right now with COVID-19, I know that you were able to build some amazing reports through Power BI to be able to help your company. Can you highlight what you're doing to support with analytics? Yes, I can. And this platform really uh, prepared us for the unexpected, um, and that's supporting in the current COVID crisis with a lot of new information needed very quickly by the leadership team of the company in what is happening with our workforce and what is happening it in relation to this. So we started using um, with the idea of our workforce analytics dashboards already and bringing in the COVID virus information that was available. And we started building views for the leadership team on the overlay of the virus against our workforce. We quickly uh, melded with our health and safety team. And they had lots of data on the on the health case, the cases in Nokia, as well as the site status and site closures and response levels across the company. We then partnered with the travel team to understand what is happening. And there was a big need to understand what were all our travelers. We have lots of them. Where are they? Uh, how many of them? Where are they going? Personnel services support team we pulled in. They are really uh, the ones responsible for tracking and, and providing the uh, employee assistance programs and how many logins and, and uh, cases are opening up across the globe. And then launched our employee sentiment 
surveys on how the, the organization is coping with the survey through our OD team. And this was what I considered sort of an Olympic team we pulled together very quickly. Um, they began meeting daily and virtual. Uh, we evolved the views with new data sources, uh, continued to work on, on what was being requested by the global leaders on how to, how to manage this, assess it, and plan for it. And we really did this over a period of the main dashboard development in about three weeks. These were all operational and just wanted to share a few of those, uh, those views with you. So the overlay of the workforce against the virus was a very, very big uh, uh, value to the organization because you can look at this in a snapshot, which is quite critical uh, to see the nature of the virus against the workforce. So this is updated daily. Um, and we, you track, you can drill down to, to the country level and all the metrics will change. I've masked some of the uh, Nokia specific figures, of course. But uh, first view is very, very popular and, and useful. We could look at dimensions of which uh, workforce we wanted to look at or regions or, or countries. And as mentioned, we connected with the health safety and security team that had all the information on our site status. What, what is the working status of all of our sites across the globe? Um, are they closed? Are they open? Is it mandatory work from home? And we can drill down into the site level. We have an age risk indicator that's changing, of course, as you go down. Um, the Noki response levels are important to know because those require different actions for different response levels. And those are changing daily. Uh, this is also available to employees about their site status and uh, response levels. We, we have a separate dashboard for all employees versus the executives or leaders. I should say. And then the travel data, as I mentioned, where are all of our travelers? This spun up easily. We were able to combine it into Power BI um, with data from the travel team. It took a while to get this clean enough for the views we wanted. But as you see here, it provides a pretty nice uh, visual on um, where are all the travelers by category. We have cat different categories of travelers, as you see here. And um, you can start, start selecting uh, by regions, by countries, again, and by target destination and uh, departure destination to really see where everyone's, what is uh, planned for travel, as well as an overlay of the travel restrictions of all of our countries, all of our sites, uh, where is there restricted travel, either by border closure of the, of the federal requirements or Nokia company requirements that have decided to, to ban or uh, restrict travel to business critical only. And then we have the employee sentiment and well-being from melding in the, uh, the HROD survey team. And this is uh, increasingly valuable. We are pulsing uh, about a third of the organization, so about a 30,000 employee pulse on, on how they're coping individually with the virus from coping well to very struggling. How is the team coping in terms of we're, we have a sustainable workable solution to we are unable to work or struggling or under delivering? And what is the amount of disruption as well from the virus and main concerns on open end text analysis you see here? Uh, the, the graph below you can, I've, I've masked the regions or the business groups rather, but you can drill down and see how this is progressing within your business group. This is uh, coming out weekly and we have new adaptations coming all the time, it's very important. And then we have the, the use cases for our personnel services, uh, which is important to track so that we can start tying together all of these pieces of data um, to get a, a view of what is the correlation, what is happening with, the, with this and, and our workforce. These use cases of, of the personal services, the number of cases is rising in these countries or in these areas. Is that tied to perhaps site closures or virus um, severity? Um, what is it, it, it telling us when you start looking across these data sources? Do we need more support elsewhere? Can we uh, better provide a, a focus for, for our efforts? And uh, all of these things together are, are uh, creating a, a superior view very quickly for the organization. Companies everywhere are really concerned about the well-being and mental health of their employees. I, while all of your reports that you just showed are truly remarkable, I, I'm especially impressed by the way you were able to create um, and get a better idea of how your employees are feeling with the sentiment analysis. Um, I think that is just super amazing. Um, 
And a huge reason that it was possible for you to build these reports on such short notice and in a time when the world is in such a major crisis is because of the foundation that you had already established in the years that led up to present day. So what are your plans for the future? Well, uh, the immediate future um, is to continue to support during this this uh, virus. And I absolutely agree with you. These listening channels and the ability to bring all, all of these data sources in together are are huge. Um, and we have the platform that we've been working on, of course, as I mentioned, since uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, so we'll continue to support. We'll continue to listen. We're adding questions to our sentiment surveys. We're adding additional data sources in, in Office 365 analytics usage on team usage um, and starting to look how we can use that into new views. Is it being used more as Teams and Jabber and Yammer and, and all these things? Is it changing? Uh, so this is pretty exciting. But, you know, the real focus to keep back on track with our roadmap was really to work on a unified data platform for HR analytics. That was started last year to migrate from our S-Core SAP system into an Azure data lake. Uh, so that was started and is moving very rapidly and it's super exciting because a number of the data sources you see here below from our core SAP system to our recruitment and, and Oracle-based Taleo system to Cornerstone On Demand um, for you know learning data, uh, compensation and succession data in in success for you, success factors, Qualtrics for survey data. All these are starting to come together and will come together. Several sources are already together. And by the end of this half, we expect this to be really operational. It's useful already to pull across all these streams. And that, that for us is a huge uh, capability enhancer uh, because we've had to work with, with uh, different teams that have these different systems and now we'll be able to seamlessly be able to pull those uh, data elements we want to look across for bigger insights using the Power BI analytics layer and uh, <clears throat> and we're already modeling some of our dashboards they're no touch uh, which is super effective of course so the data modeling now begins in how we provision into our visualization needs as well as a platform for our data science and, and my data science team to start really looking cross domain data. And that brings us into new capabilities and use cases. Uh, it's very important that we're able to kind of look across these things between the sentiment data, for example, that we just talked about and the operational data. So, <clears throat> you know, certain things in the data operationally will tell you what is happening. And you, you can see this either in trend or, or a snapshot but the um, experience data, uh, sentiment data, is starts to tell you why, maybe why it's happening, or vice versa. You have negative sentiment or positive sentiment across the organization. From our survey vehicles, we can see this, but we may be able to tell you with operational data aggregation and, and analytics, maybe why that's happening, because certain things have happened operationally or in, in uh, the demographics or what it might be. Um, to maybe start looking at reasons for that that behavior change or that belief change. Uh, so it's very powerful and this will all lend in to additional sources for our predictive attrition modeling and lots of other uh, advanced analytic projects we will get into. So centralized data, Power BI capability, visualization, storytelling, we're getting better at it um, and it's being highly valued. We just now need to work to bring our HR our community of users who you may not be so uh, data oriented into the data driven world uh, of HR. And for us, really the whole mission is, is this, it's just to bring greater insights to the business and in, in, in related to, to people data for better business decisions. Perfect. David, as we wrap up, is there any final last thing you'd like to add? Well, I can just say thank you, and, and um, I really appreciate the opportunity for us to showcase this journey and the usage of, of the partnership with Microsoft has been, uh, uh, the support has been great in the journey through the platforms and the tools. Um, super exciting. Uh, it, it's a very big value proposition for us, and as we move forward, as you see, the connectivity, the usage, the insights, and the value will will become paramount in the HR world going forward. So, so thanks for the opportunity to share this. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time and the effort that I know you put into this presentation. I think it was truly amazing. So I really appreciate you. Thank you.